Jesus Christ. Well, like, so even when it comes to like the concept of, of drama these days, one of the things that I like, I, I think about a lot is for me, it's like drama is exhausting, right? One of the things that like recently I, I've witnessed is it's so much more serious. Like the stakes are super duper high. Every time there's like any drama that comes out with YouTubers, it always has something to do with like an allegation, grooming, like really, yeah. really serious shit. It's something illegal. It's, like, it's not just two yeah. people that hate each other. It used to be yeah. funny. When, when, yeah, when we used to look at drama, it was always like super low stakes. I, I told Keem this like fucking months back. It's like the best drama on YouTube, in my opinion was the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 nuke fake. That was the best drama because it was treated so high stakes at the time, right? Yep. Like, people don't realize, like, back in the day, getting a nuke on Call of Duty, you had to get, like, 25 kills, 24 if you were a fucking pussy and used hardline, to get a nuclear uh, a nuke on, like, a kill streak on Modern Warfare 2. It would end the game. It was, like, the biggest thing. As soon as people knew it, there were videos video after videos of like the biggest commentators at the time. It's like world record nuke, right? World re I got a nuke in 15 seconds or some fucking insane amount. And effectively what happened was like YouTubers back in the day would fake those nukes. So they would like get all their friends to come into a lobby. They'd fake an entire gameplay. It was like a fucking orchestrated piece. And they would have their careers removed, like lambasting in the community for how dare you fake this achievement in a video game, which nowadays everyone would have been doing everyone yeah. would fake it every fucking like mo every modern warfare streamer to get a clip these days fucks up their in-game mmr so hard that they're playing with literal fetuses and the gameplay looks like them just curb stomping like everyone that it's such commonplace shit but back in the day it was like oh you fake this gameplay achievement you piece of fucking shit it would yep. like spawn entire disagreement <laughs> you, know, you know the clara and clip the clara <laughs> clip it's Which like one? someone's play i think it was csgo and they were like they had wall hacks like they would shoot them through walls or whatever yeah and yeah. it was obvious and then people in her chat start telling her about it and she's like <gasps> clara did you install a mod in my in my game clara <laughs> clara like <laughs> there's so yeah. many of those you guys like, like you guys all know sniper wolf right yeah. yeah. So Sniper Wolf started Wolf her Ransom. career being like a Call of Duty commentator, just like anyone else. And she would like mm. sit there looking all cute or whatever, playing Call of Duty. And uh, people started noticing that like her hand motions on the controller didn't match what was going on <laughs> in oh, the yeah, fucking bro. game. So there was she, always she's this big. Still doing that with reactions. Yeah. There was yeah. there was always this big controversy around <laughs> Sniper Wolf. Like people hated her, and I would be like. No, I can't even say it's 2022. <laughs> I have multiple Twitter videos responding to that. You can look them up where I question people's sexuality because I'm like, that's what you're concerned with? That's why you're watching Sniper Wolf for gameplay? <laughs> like, really? <laughs> um, but, you know, it, it's just funny. Um, it, it's funny how serious that was at the time. Yeah. And now it's almost like uh, viewers don't care that things are fake. They just want to be entertained. And it's it's really sad because, uh, you know, the one thing that made uh, the Internet different than TV is that it was supposed to be real. That is know? true. Yeah. You came back and it's just it's such a depressing thing to get into. And I'm sure it reflects it in a drama alert, like when you're covering any topic and it's like now you have to think about, oh, there's so many allegate it's like legal hurdles to cross. And it's just like no, but even sometimes more than that. an allegation comes out. Right. And it is just an allegation. And it's like, do you run with it? Do you report it? Like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, I always get um, I always get shit for um, covering the story on um, mm -hmm. shit. What the fuck is his name? The blonde haired dude uh, that was the fuck is his name what how am i forgetting his name right now has he gotten this irrelevant carson mm. um call me carson i always get yeah. shit for running that story on call me carson because it ended up being you know carson was like 19 messing around with like 17 year olds which isn't really a big deal um mm -hmm. uh and i always these videos pop up and like keemstar tried to ruin car no no like everyone just wants to talk about that story without facts or without what actually took place what took place is carson went to his friends which are other youtubers and said hey i've been you know sexting minor fans and started crying and had this breakdown and so a month passes and all these other YouTubers are dealing with this guilt of knowing that their friend is doing this to their fans without knowing any details. And they got frustrated 
and they wanted to out this stuff. So I mm. interviewed them. And before I interviewed Noah to tell his story of what took place, we didn't know the exact ages. You know, we didn't know. I mean, Carson said shit, but we don't know the actual facts. Right. And Carson isn't publicly coming out saying he's doing this and admitting it. Um, so I interview a YouTuber who's credible and I know he's like credible because he's a fellow YouTuber. This isn't some random fucking person on the internet. And then I also privately talked to every other YouTuber that witnessed Carson admitting this to. So I knew yep. that this scenario happened with Carson. He, I do the interview with uh, Noah. Nua tell, tells the absolute truth and it's backed up by Carson when he responds. And then finally, like these girls come out and we realize, Oh, it really wasn't that big of a deal. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, but it's like people get mad at me saying, oh, you tried to ruin Carson for fucking around with somebody. I didn't even know that at the time. The The story, the, the person who outed Carson was Carson himself. That is the source of this story. So it's like, yeah, you're always dealing with, um, you know, bull bullshit criticism, not fair criticism. Um, you know, a lot of times like YouTubers um, will beat up each other or something. Can't even cover that on YouTube anymore. It gets demonetized. There's so much stuff that you can't talk about and you can't cover um, that are important that people should know about. Um, uh, the essay allegations, the the, the pedo mm -hmm. allegations, you can't cover that stuff anymore and actually just talk in plain English about it. We got to say this person's being accused of being a P, you know, or yeah. essay allegation. Like, it's so you weird. You got to speak in fucking code words and shit, it's, <laughs> like it's, fucking it, Morse it, code in order to survive on the platform. Yeah. It's such a weird time. And because uh, nobody's like, th there's no fun drama where people are talking shit back and forth. Yeah. You know, there's not that anymore. And it's like, you know, all these restrictions and all these changes and the cancel culture and the platforms cracking down on different stuff and this demonetized stuff has really caused us to not be a community anymore. Like we used to be a community. Like if I did something, then fans would know that I did that and that Logan did this and that, you know, KSI did this. They would know all this in a day because they're watching everybody's videos and it was like a community and everyone was kind of like linked together in a way. We don't really yeah, have when we don't you do have something we yeah. everyone else also talks about it we discuss it everyone has like their own like i think twitch is more like that twitch twitch itself is more of a Except community focus twitch it's like, any, anyone that badmouths someone else on twitch will just get like excommunicated so yeah. Yeah. It, it's not it's not Almost like cultish. how youtube used to be either it's very yeah. cultish you get kicked out of the poggers community. People. Yeah, poggers but you see, community. the issue is with Twitch, the only way to grow is for streamers to send their viewers to other streamers. Like there's no algorithm that actually pushes content. So you kind of have to be friends with everybody or else you're kind of screwed on Twitch. Or you have to be on live stream fails like every fucking day. But again, that, <laughs> so, that also yeah. is just like five streamers that are rotating on live stream fails. Yeah, live stream fails is just like, hey, XQC clip of the fucking day. Let's go. And also, if you look at beef I can that still happened. Hear, but I can still hear, but I got to pee. It's like right around the corner. Yeah, no problem. If you look at beef that happened in 2016, it was like content cop. Like they were making fun of each other's content. It wasn't like trying to expose other people as yeah pedophiles, for being like yeah right? like really and shitty like today you know. if someone makes fun of someone else's content it's like but he's not hurting anybody how can you make yeah. fun of his content.